hello we are very organized not not really um so oh. we got bored we thought that we would create come up with a uh perfect team card wish list of things we wanted with the twist the whole premise was we came up with 10 cards that we wanted in perfect team either in 21 or in a future game but they're rules like we can't pick so the, the rules are you can't pick a card that's already in perfect team 21 and you mm -hmm. can't pick a card that's a peak card you have to pick a specific year and we had uh different categories um i guess i rock this we'll start with you the first category we had was a player from 2020 so we have to pick a player from 2020 but it's not a so, live card so it has to be a past but it's year. Well, so like like it would be a card for this year in potentially like a next game or something. Ah, lame. Well, that mine did not work out that way. Um, oh, well, how did, what did you, so I what did it based you? on it's a player who played this year, but I did it based on a past year. Oh no! So mine is actually based on stats this year. <laughs> That's fine. We we did not obviously we communicate very well. Well, you do what you had. Do what you yeah. have first. So Do I had uh, Christian Cologne from 2015. Uh, so I will were, bring up his stats. So they were. He would on. not be. He would be an iron card, and he would. Oh, not, I didn't even go that in depth. <laughs> yeah. No, like, like not even. I didn't go that in depth, but like, just look, if you look at his stats, he's an iron card. But here's the, Christian Cologne, 2015, the, Kansas City Royals. The reason I chose him is. He hit the game. He got the game-winning RBI in the twelfth inning of the World Series, and okay. that was about the only thing he did of note in his Royals career. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. if I fun. had to go with one based on twenty twenty, I would say um, it's sort of in stuff. the game. I would go with Jesse Winkler. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh, Jesse Winkler had a really really good year he's he got a player of the month card this year um Go jesse winker this is probably his kind of coming out party um because he absolutely mashed the ball um he had 12 what like 12 home runs in like however many games this year so okay okay so i have a a choice for 2020 <laughs> And I thought a lot about this, mm -hmm. but the answer was obvious to me. And I wanted to pick a player that was on a team that maybe didn't do so well. Because I feel like a lot of these 2020 players, like Randy or Rosarena and yeah. Giolito, like they're going to get cards. And I kind of wanted to focus on with some of my picks players that may fly under the radar. Yeah. So... I, I tried to think a lot about it, and I, I ended up going with something way stupid, obvious, and you're going to shame me for it. You said it's a team that didn't do well, and you wanted to focus on them, and it's Alex Verdugo. Yeah, it's Alex Verdugo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, like, I, I have, like, legit reasons as to why, why I go with him over some other cards. So... First off, Alex Verdugo had a very consistent year. Um, yeah. he, he did really well. Like He finished um, above what everyone was going to expect expecting him to do. So like, yep. he had a 308 average, 367 OBP. But I think he would make a very interesting card in Perfect Team. Because here's a fun Alex Verdugo fact. Alex Verdugo was the only player this season to have over a 300 average against both left-handed and right-handed pitchers. Hmm. I think these ratings on his live card are kind of weird. I don't like them, I and I'm hoping that they get updated for the next game. Yeah. I, I just don't think they accurately reflect how he played. Um, what What is it? Who's on stream? What have you missed? We're going through our perfect team wish list as the... Uh, you know, title states and Brees was thinking 2001 Nomo because uh, he got a second um, uh, no hitter that year with Boston um, that's an interesting choice maybe he'll fit one of the ca categories we have coming up so the next category we had was a play we had a 5 2020 player now you have to pick a player from before 1900 <laughs> 1900 or before 
So we all have a friend that we remember from 1884, right? His name is Old Hoss Radborn. And Old Hoss Radborn is in the game. But mm-hmm. he his Old Hoss's claim to fame is that he pitched like an insane number of games yeah. in a row for the Providence Grays. But the story of how he got there is pretty interesting. So may I present my pre-1900 selection, Charlie Sweeney. And this would be 1884 Charlie Sweeney. And Charlie Sweeney had an interesting claim to fame. He struck out 19 batters in a row, and that was not repeated until 102 years later. Right. So he was a pretty good uh, pretty good pitcher. Right. So in, in he he got like super drunk, I think it was, and left the Providence Grays, and that's how um like he just didn't want to pitch anymore, and that's yeah. how uh Old Hoss got the pitching job. But so here we have uh his stats. He played tw- he only played twenty seven games for the Grays, but he had a a, a whip of point eight two four. Yeah. So uh yeah, what is your uh, yeah? And Charlie Sweeney doesn't have a card in the game. So so um. Mine is Dummy Hoy, uh, and it's his 1891 year. But he had okay. he had an on base percentage of 424 and a slugging percentage of 360. Yeah, and he, looks like and, he led in walks. Yeah, too. he led the league in walks, uh, which is which is really why I chose that year is because he led the league in walks that year. Plate appearances. Um, so and he only struck out twenty five times, which you know for those days is not that low, but for now, you know that's 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 insanely low right. for now. I guess the next one we'll go with is a player with a funny name. All right, so, as a Royals fan, I think everyone knows who I'm going to go with. Okay. Rusty Coons. Rusty Coons. Okay, so why did why did you pick Rusty Coons? Uh, because he's a he's a really he has a really funny name. And I chose his 1984 season. It was his best season. Uh, it was a really good season too. So, yeah, he was. Okay. He, would, <laughs> so, he, was he was not a good player. So. Yeah. Well, the person I have is not a good player either. Um, I, I did something. I think my player is even worse. Okay. So, you know, back in the dead ball era, there were a <laughs> lot of players with really strange names, right? Yep. And if you ever play play in like a franchise, like you see some of them like when you're drafting. Yeah. It it is just so funny. And so there was this one guy that caught my eye who showed up in like the nineteen eleven draft. Mm-hmm. And he's not a good player at all. He is a pitcher. Mm-hmm. And his name? Mm-hmm. Mysterious Walker. <laughs> Yup, Mysterious Walker. Are you sure that's not a fictional name? It do- he doesn't even have, like, an actual name listed. <laughs> like, Baseball Reference says his full name is Frederick Mitchell Walker. Mysterious Walker. That's what we're going with. Um, I like it. I like it. And so I picked his 1913 season because he played, um... It's He only played 11 games... But yeah. like that's more than the previous two seasons, and then afterwards he was in the federal league. He'd have he'd have really good movement, um, decent control, low stuff. He'd be an interesting guy. right. Mysterious Walker, great name for a pitcher. It's the new Connor. It's the new Connor Joe. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. so our next category was a player who was famous for playing for another team. But you pick uh, a year and a team for them that is not that team. So I decided that I was very frustrated with this one, with something in current Perfect Team. There's a player in current Perfect Team. He has three cards, all for his famous team. And not one for the other team he played for. And I think... That's kind of weird. I mean, like, it's not weird, given who he is, but, like, this is a very famous dude, and people have been asking 
for this card for a while and I think we deserve one in the next iteration of Perfect Team. We don't need one in this game because there's already too many of him. But may I present to you Babe Ruth. Uh, okay, you juke me there. Year... What? You juke me there. I duped you? Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's a few places where I might dupe, dupe you. I, I, I had pulled up Mike Wall and had highlighted the uh, to the 2007 season you already. You have a terrible memory because I told you that Babe Ruth was this one. You asked me. Uh, like last week. Um, I can't even remember what I had for breakfast. That sounds like a personal problem. It is anyway, a very good problem. I, I went with with 1916 because as you can see from his batting he, he batted 272 so not mm -hmm. terrible but it was by far his best pitching year I, was gonna say, I feel like uh, this is a pitcher yes this would be pitcher babe um we don't have a pitcher babe so like we have two batters and then one two way this would yeah, solely say, be a pitcher babe I was just say that I think the one we have that's that is a good pitcher is a two-way. Um, mm -hmm. I think at higher levels, that thing doesn't pitch. I would assume so. Does anyone have Babe Ruth in here? So, okay. yeah, Babe the pitcher would be rough and down the road. It doesn't have to be in Diamond, though. It can just be whatever. I don't care what these cards are. I just want yeah. them in the game regardless. Are you talking because... about, are you talking about, like, the, the one that's currently in the game? Uh, yeah, uh, no, no it's, um, are you talking about the one that's currently in, or just a pitcher, Babe the pitcher I... in general? Yeah, I definitely agree. The one that's currently in the game, I don't even know if it would pitch in gold very well. I just yeah. want these cards in the game to have representation, not even necessarily that they would play. Yeah, he's talking about the one currently in the game, and I agree okay. with that. You can, okay. you can make a babe that would do well in diamond or even perfect, uh, but it would have to be from before, well before he went to the Yankees, probably. Might have to mm -hmm. be that 16 year. Mine is... This is the one I sort of I sort of gave the game away on this one for you. Um, I think mine can be associated with two teams. Mm. Um, I mm. don't know exactly who everyone is going to associate him with. I associate him as a twin. It's where he had most of his good years. It's where he came up. It's where I saw him, you know, destroy the Royals in the mid two thousands. Um, but he also had a lot of success later in his career in Pittsburgh. He revived his career in Pittsburgh. So I am going with Francisco Liriano, and it's his two thousand thirteen year. He went sixteen and eight uh, with a three point zero two ERA across one hundred and sixty one innings. And a whip of one point two two four, which is which is impressive. Yeah, and nine point one strikeouts per inning. And you consider average at the major league level is about seven and a half. You have a really salt for for a guy who at that point we were all concerned like he was done to just turn around and out of nowhere like the year before his ERA was five point three four. And then his next three years in Pittsburgh, he had years of 3.02, 3.38, and 3.38. So, yeah, you know, I know a lot of people are going to remember him for his Pittsburgh time as well. Um, but I think he's definitely more recognizable to a, a significant number of people as a twin. Well, we, we have a problem, I think. I think that the like, uh, Pittsburgh... Uh, card for this would be we. I don't think we have enough good Pirates cards just in general and like that's yeah. not and the Pirates are an old old team but like within recent years they haven't unfortunately been as good Yeah. and I would like to see more Pirates cards be added and I think this would help fill a nice void in that yeah and you know give players credit <clears throat> for their best years even if they're on yeah. teams you wouldn't normally associate them with um, so, um, next one is a player is it... not born in the United States. Yes. And uh, this is a player that oh. absolutely used to absolutely destroy the Royals. Um, so, uh, this is a player, he came up with the Indians. Uh, that's where I remember him most. He's had, he's had a pretty solid career uh, with a few teams. Um, 
He's, he's it's Shinsu Chu. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm choosing Shinsu his 2013 Chi. year. Um, he let, he hit 285, 423, 462. Um, and he also led the league in hit by pitches. Yes, um, I can. But he tell was 12th you... in MVP word voting. Yeah, <laughs> and I can I can tell you uh, the reason I chose him is because I remember I went to a game with uh, my scout troop when I was a kid, and it was an Indians game, and I would have been like, I would have been in early high school, um, and all game long, every time he came up to plat bat. They, the the troop broke up into three different groups, and we would all say Shin, Su, Chu. <laughs> that it was great, great. and great. you know he's had a quietly solid career. He really has. I, I feel think, like he really just goes under the radar. Yeah, I think he I think he deserves a lot more credit. You know, he came over. Um, at how old was he when he came over? He came over at twenty two, which is pretty early for. For, uh, for a KBO guy. Yeah, and he's just yeah. consistently been, you know, he's had some down years, but he's consistently been a productive major leaguer. Let me, um, he has, I bet he has, he has cards, so like he has. He has a live, um, I know that. He has, a, he has a live and he has two different, he, he has, um yeah, he has the live and then he also has the, the reds card. Oh, well, that one is in the game then. Crap. Yeah, you were supposed to check these ahead of time. I did not do my job. You did not do your job. Um, well, then. I uh, can confirm then, that mine then, is not in the game. Yeah, then let's go with his 2008 year. It was a shortened season, but he hit 309, 397, 549, uh, 14 home runs. Yeah, still a really solid year, even though we only played 94 games. I picked somebody that doesn't have a card in Perfect Team at all. And it's somebody... Again, this is a weird, deep cut. Mm -hmm. um, this is a player that was born in Cuba. Okay. And he actually was one part of the original Cuban expansion into um major league baseball mm -hmm. in the dead ball era <laughs> um there were a lot of cubans in the dead ball era that right. were able to play and this guy's a utility player and i picked him because he was such a staple for me me and my franchise he did a really great job as a utility player and was pretty mm -hmm. solid armando marsans and specifically um, I want to go with his 1913 year. But yeah, so he he played for the Reds, so another Reds player. Mm -hmm. um, he had an OBP of 353. He batted 317. He played in 110 games. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just feel like it would be nice if we had like a Cuban, like a dead ball Cuban set. Yeah. I think and we I need like... to get. It's it's really hard to get a lot of these dead ballers into the game. Yes. Because you only have so many room for the so, room for so many of these historical cards. He played like if you look at his 1913 season, he played like every position. Yeah. Like it's insane. Like I just think he would be a really good. It would be maybe, yeah. It would like, be really um, interesting. I don't want to say we need more dead ball guys, but like we need more dead ball guys. We need more dead ball guys. I agree with that. And and like pre nineteen hundred guys, there's not enough of them, and this is a great way to bring diversity into it, so it's not just old dead white guys. Old dead white, yeah. There's 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 I a mean, few of those. So. Yeah. Okay. So our next our next one is mm -hmm. a player that should have gotten an award, but didn't. Now, he has a card in Perfect Team already, but it's a peak card. It's not for a specific year, mm. so I can get away with this. Say hello to stream legend 1931 Bill Terry. 
uh, who was the MVP for our franchise for a long time until his retirement. You said 1931? 1931. He batted 349. He uh, batted, and he had an all-base percentage of 397, and he was third in MVP voting. So if we take a look at the MVP voting, mm -hmm. we will see that, yeah, Frankie Frisch and Chuck Klein, you know, their stats are a little bit better. Chuck mm -hmm. Klein had a better OBP. Uh, Frankie Frisch slugged better. Uh, no, actually, no, he didn't slug better. Anyway, um, regardless, this doesn't take, this takes uh, one thing into account, though. Bill Terry, during 1931, not only did the New York Giants get to the World Series, mm -hmm. he was the player manager. Ah. So, like, you could say he's the ultimate MVP, because not only is he playing, he has yeah. to manage the team. Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't get the MVP. He has as good, if not he better, numbers than at least Frankie Fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you he could make he an has... argument for Chuck Klein, but My also choice. I want to know why he wasn't even voted for in nineteen thirty. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I have no idea. Justice for Bill Terry. Anyone who knows me knows who my favorite player in the major leagues is. Yeah, Alex Verdugo. He is a former royal. Um, he has won a Cy Young Award, and mine is not going to be the people above him didn't deserve it. Mine is, he pitched in, he pitched so well in a year where two other pitchers pitched so well. And it's mm -hmm. Zach Grinke's 2015 year. It is the lowest ERA since Bob Gibson's 1968. He had a 1.66 ERA, a .84 whip. He had 19 wins, uh, 200 strikeouts. If you look at who won the, the Cy Young that year, oh, he finished second. He beat Kershaw. The winner of the Cy Young that year was Jake Arrieta. And I agree with that award. Jake Arrieta's second half that year was the most dominant I've seen a pitcher over a two to three month period. But Zach Grinke through the entire year was just so good. In any other year, he wins uh, unanimously, I think. And so he doesn't exist in... He has a 2009 and he has a live. Okay, so he doesn't have 2015. That's ridiculous that he doesn't have one. He has, he has a live, he has an 09, he has an 04. But he so doesn't he have does... 2015. And this yeah, is also, he... if you tune into Science Saturday and you see me homering for Grinky as a royal, this is the year that Alex is referring to when he says this is when we're going to exact Grinky. This is 2015, uh, 2000, yeah. no, it's 2013 through 2015 seasons in LA. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he was he was just almost unstoppable in LA. The next the next uh category was a player that is not in the Hall of Fame but should be. And I I have a bad answer. Okay. Um yeah. It better not be Mike Lowell. It's not Mike Lowell, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> So at first I thought, oh, I'll just have 1981 Dwight Evans because he didn't mm -hmm. make it into the Hall of Fame. But um, I looked and that card is already in the game. Okay. 1981 Dwight Evans. So then I thought, who else is a Red Sox? But I kind of wanted it to be a Red Sox and isn't in the Hall of Fame. And I did come up with a bad answer. Now, this player has a card in game, but it's a peak card. Mm -hmm. And I don't think... I don't think he would qualify for the Hall of Fame just based on his stats alone. I think mm -hmm. he would have to get in there as a manager or coach. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of cheating on this one. But I'm going with 1946 Johnny Pesky. 
who he, he did um he had he led in hits mm-hmm. he batted 335 he said 46 uh, 401 yeah 46 he's not leading too much because remember he's like, ted williams is playing right he's an all-star that year he was fourth in mvp voting mm-hmm. and you know his career like he was in world war ii so his career was cut short a right. little bit but he spent so many years after his career as a coach for the Red Sox and as like a manager. Like he, he spent so many years for the Red Sox. Like the Red Sox waived their like retire number policy mm-hmm. to retire his number when he was like eighty nine. But I I just think that we should he should be in the Hall of Fame. His buddies are all in the Hall of Fame, and you his, know his he had such is an- known. Yeah, pesky pole. Like, that is a thing. I... I admit that I do not have a great history of the game knowledge. Part of that is the Royals have sucked and they are my team. My uh, initial thought was there's no Royal who deserves to be in the Hall of Fame other than George Brett Mm -hmm. and then eventually Carlos Beltran and Zach Greinke. That's it. For their time as a... Where you would think their time as a right. royal. So I had to go through the <laughs> baseball reference Hall of Fame metrics to find someone. And I looked through a few that surprised me and I'm like, how are they not in the Hall of Fame? Especially on the pitching side. And then I decided to go look at the hitting side and I found Gavi Pravat. Oh, G A V V Y. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know who this guy is. So I chose his 1915 year. He he hit so many home runs in the dead ball era. Mm-hmm. He was so he was such a good home run hitter in the dead ball era. I think that. He was, he was such a good player in that era. I think he should, you know, the voters passed over him, I think probably because he had a shorter career. Um, but, you know, we can get him in with the veteran committee now. He wasn't even nominated for an MVP that year. That's insane. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that's the most home runs hit in a single season during the dead ball era off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I don't think it is. But you can see the dead ball era ended in what, 1919 or 1920? The dates fluctuate. Usually 1920 is considered like the cutoff point. He led the league in home runs in six of seven years. Six out of seven years in the dead ball era. Mm -hmm. And I think part of that is just because of how the Hall of Fame committee and nominations work. All of these guys had to be grandfathered in. Yeah. From the start. Well, and that's the other thing is his voting was in 1938 because that was the first year of the Hall of Fame. Well, who else was nominated that year? Babe Ruth. (laughs) Yeah. Like, everyone was nominated that year. You have so many people. Hang on. Hang on. He exists in this game. 1915. And we can go with his 1914 or his 1914. Okay. All right. Obviously, I did not do my homework. It is it is exactly like my college. I just I don't do the reading for my masters. I just show up on the day of, and do the discussion posts, and somehow get away with it. That, that was me in college too. Uh, the next one is a player selected in the Rule Five draft. And I thought we were gonna have the same one, but I guess we're not going to. Although because mine is you a said, cheesy. Because you said yours is not a Red Sox, correct? Or never played for the Red no. Sox? No. So mine did play for the Red Sox at the end of his career. Um, he was drafted in the Rule 5 draft twice. I'm going with his second one because he had much more success that year. Uh, and he actually stuck there. And it's, who, it's the team he's going to be remembered with. It's 2005 mm-hmm. Shane Victorino. Oh my gosh, the flying Hawaiian. And most importantly, I this is the one I did check. Shane Victorino has zero cards in the game. 
Yeah, that I know. That because I know. the other one I was going to go with was Josh Hamilton, and he has one. And, so what year specifically? Uh, two thousand five. So yeah, the stat. You know, there's not that many stats, but you know, that was the year he was picked. Right. Well, and so, it has to be the year they were picked for this yeah. specific category. So you know, he he totally deserves to be in perfect team. Like he was such a key part of those Phillies team. I thought Shane Victorino deserved to be in perfect team. He's he's such a good player for for those uh, teams in Philly. He was even good, you know, later in his career with the Red Sox too. Every little thing is gonna be all right. Like that was a thing. Like Shane Victorino, I thought about picking Shane Victorino actually, but I didn't because I didn't want another Red Sox player. <laughs> and I and intentionally picked him because he was a Red Sox. I decided to pick a really obvious Rule Five draft. Example. and he doesn't have, I checked he doesn't have this year in the end but he has some other cards mm -hmm. and I picked it because I really liked this player growing up and I feel if they were ever to add a rule 5 draft mission this guy would probably be a mission proper Lord. can you figure it out um, not because he's good or anything but like he's well known I went with 2000 Johan Santana. I almost went with Johan Santana for my uh, player you remember better for their time on another team. Oh, one of his Mets years? Yeah. But he doesn't have the 2000, and I think, I mean, he wasn't bad in 2000. I mean, his stats weren't, his stats were what you would expect from a Rule 5 guy coming in yeah. as a pitcher. But... Yeah. You know, make him like an iron or bronze card. And right. you look, and oh my goodness, two years later, he had a 2.99 ERA. Right. It's almost <clears> like... <throat> it's almost like he's good. Yeah. And then he won right. Cy Young two years after that. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. You, you could also use him for a player who belongs in the Hall of Fame. Yes. Um, but I, I wanted to, he, he fits a couple categories, but I, yeah. I figured we had to get Johan there. A player that would have been the MVP if they had won their series, either ALCS or World Series. And I think my choice is going to surprise you. Um, this is a, an ALCS mm -hmm. where a team lost to the Yankees. Nope, it's nope. 2001 John Olerud. The Adam Mariners. Why do I associate him with the Red Sox, though? Probably because that's what you remember when you were watching in 2005. Or he, or I remember him on uh, some night baseball every week. When it was Red Sox <laughs> or Yankees every week. The 2007 ALC, 2001 ALCS against mm -hmm. the Yankees... Uh, the Mariners lost, and it would either have been Brett Boone or John Olerud that would have gotten the MVP. Um, it's very hard to tell because the Mariners only won one game in that series. Mm -hmm. Boone hit a bunch of home runs, but Olerud had a lot of singles that got people on base and into position to score. And he only has a 1993 Toronto card. Yeah. So, so. mine for this is, again, kind of an obvious example for me. Um, I believe his poster is still up in my childhood bedroom. <laughs> um, I cried when the Royals traded him because I was about 10. No, I would have been 12. Uh, and I didn't understand, you know, the concept of building the farm system. Also, the Royals oh, yeah. sucked at doing that. So, you know, um, so I was originally going to go with his 2004 year. But it does already have a card, which sucks because, holy crap, his 2004 uh, NLCS was insane. Um, instead, I'm going to go with his 2006 NLCS with the Mets for Carlos Beltran. But he hit 296, 387, 667, three home runs, and a double in eight hits. And he probably would have been MVP because he struck out to end the series. 
struck out looking. If he had gotten a hit there and they had won that game, he would have almost certainly been the, the MVP of that series. Wow. That's a good pick. Um, Beltron Beltron has an has 2004 um and he has one with the Royals, but he does not have a I don't even yeah. know if he has one with the Mets, does he? Yeah, I don't think he does. And that's kind of where you would associate him. The last one is the wild card. Yep. Sorry. So you go you go first cuz you're No, you go faster. you go first. You go first. Okay. So mine is kind of a weird one. Um this didn't really fit in anywhere, but I oh, wanted Snaggle, to... yes, a wish list. Um, you're just coming in at the end, though. Unfortunately, these are the last two cards. I'm, um... I'm gonna, I'm gonna snip it up and put a bot on YouTube. I can send it to you if you want. Um, <laughs> the uh, one I went with. This is also a player who is a pitcher and a hitter in his career. Babe Ruth. No, I'm kidding. No, he <laughs> was a pitcher early in his career. And then switch to playing an outfielder later in his career. Babe Ruth. It is Rick Ankeel in 2000. And 2000, Rick Ankeel in 2000, he was a pitcher, he was a top prospect for the, for the Cardinals, and he melted down in the playoffs. No. And he got the yips. And he was never the same after that. You look at his pitching uh, in 2000. He had a 3.5 ERA in 30 starts. He was rook He's finished second in Rookie of the Year. And then he melted down in uh, the postseason against the Mets. And... He just never got it back. You can see his ERA the next year, 7.13. Didn't play for two years. Comes back. Nothing. Doesn't have yeah. it again. And then he comes back in 2007 as an outfielder. Has a decent career as an outfielder. But I wanted to get Rick Ankeel as a pitcher in there because we need more pitcher hitters and he could he could hit for a pitcher obviously like if you look right. at his batting that year 252 292 382 across 73 games like you look later in his career he hit okay he'd be an okay hitter snaggle says dms are always open and your wild card is do i have to say <laughs> you guys already know yes we do it's mike lowell from 2007 mike lowell um, let me bring him up. Um, hmm. I could just go back and loop to the footage when you announced Babe Ruth, and I was just sitting there waiting. Yeah, so waiting um, I just have the stats here. Mike Wool in 2007, World mm -hmm. Series MVP. Um, he was an All Star, fifth in regular MVP voting. He, mm -hmm. um, he had a th uh, 324 batting average, 378 on base percentage. 879 OPS mm -hmm. and 501 slugging and he was just insane and I love him and I will die on this hill we must have 2007 at, Michael I, I remember I was like okay she's she's kind of like really obsessed with 2007 Mike Lowell and then I went yes. and looked up the numbers and I'm like oh holy shit no she's right um I've been a very big Mike Lowell fan since I was like 11 or 12 and I have not stopped talking about him since then so it's my goal to convert everyone to Mike Lowell We have already successfully bullied Alex to add him into the backyard project. Yes. Now we have to now we have to bully Snaggle into adding him to perfect. I don't want to bully people though. Like, I, I just want to like kindly convert people. I want to use lots of positivity <laughs> and aggressive smiling. <laughs> Aggressive smiling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's really it, I guess. Uh, let's go through our list one more time before we sign off. Yeah, you want to go first? You go first, and then I will. I will okay. Go. So mine are a player from before 2020, Christian Col or from 2020 was Christian Cologne from 2015 because I didn't understand the rules. 
Uh, a player from before 1900 was Dummy Hoy from 19 or 1891. A player with a funny name, Rusty Koontz, 1984. A card for a player on a team who is well, who is more well known for playing on another team, Francisco Liriano, 2013. A player who is not born in the United States, Shinsu Chu. I have 2013, but he already has a card in there, so I think it was 08. Um, a player who deserved to win an award but did not, 2015 Grinky. Uh, a player who belongs in the Hall of Fame but voters passed over, uh, Gavi Kravath. Um, any of his years between 1913 and 1919, really. Not 1915. But that's not 1915, because that's in the game. <laughs> um, a player selected in the Rule 5 draft, 2015 Shane Victorino. Player who would have been selected series MVP had their team won the series, Beltron 2006 Mets, and a wild card 2000 Rick Ankiel as a pitcher. And my list is a, a 2020 player is 2020 Alex Verdugo, a pre 1900 player 1884 Charles Charlie Sweeney, a player with a funny name 1913 Mysterious Walker, uh, a player that is known for playing for another team uh, 1916 Babe Ruth. A player not born in the U.S., 1913 Armando Marsans. A player that should have won an award but didn't, 1931 Bill Terry. A player that should be in the Hall of Fame but is not, 1946 Johnny Pesky. A Rule 5 player in their first uh, year of the Rule 5 draft, 2000 Johan Santana. A player that would have been MVP if they had won the ALCS, NLCS, or World Series. 2001 John Olerud and a wild card player or whatever 2007 Michael so uh right. that is that See thank you, you for coming by yep bye thanks bye. for watching guys bye bye the cards they should cards TJ should definitely put in PT <laughs> no not gonna be like that so we may not have a have a lot of people Imagine if we stream and it's just us. Eh, that would be that. funny. I've done that before. How quickly are we going to get to Mike Lowell? You will <laughs> find out. At least we bullied Alex into putting him in the backyard project. I, I, I take credit for that one. And I'm helping.